Hello, it's uh, Mr. Christopher, and we're going to talk today about the labs we did in class and uh, talk about precipitation. And uh, precipitation is when you have uh, two ions in solution, and their attraction for one another causes them to stick together and make a solid precipitate. Um, it's uh, produced in a chemical reaction when you have two solutions, and in the solid forms, it falls out of the solution, kind of like precipitation falls out of the sky. Um, the solid is precipitated um, out of the solution. When you have a precipitate form, there's some general guidelines or rules you can see. Certain chemicals, when added together, will produce a precipitate. Other ones, when they're added together, they will stay aqueous and stay separate from one another. Their attraction is not great enough. The things that tend to be insoluble, um, heavy metal ions, like slash, who plays heavy metal, silver um, included in that. Um, heavy metal ions tend to be insoluble. If you have a funnel and you filter them out, they will be the solid. Hydroxide ions also tend to be insoluble as well. However, uh, they are soluble with like sodium, lithium, potassium with plus one ions called the alkali, um, alkali ions. Uh, things that tend to be insoluble as well are things with larger charges. There's a larger attraction between them, and so they tend to stick together most of the time. Uh, plus 2, plus 3, minus 2, minus 3 charges. So if you see a larger charge, it probably will be insoluble. There's some gray areas there. Um, <clears throat> things that are soluble include positive and negative charges and nitrates. And uh, sulfates, SO4 minus 2, sulfates, they're soluble with plus 1 and plus 2s, but not with plus 3s. So sulfates are another thing that... Um, are sometimes soluble, I mean sometimes insoluble. They tend to be soluble most of the time. Now if you look at a chemical reaction, here you can see a balanced chemical reaction. and We've got calcium chloride and sodium oxalate making sodium chloride and calcium oxalate. When you mix two ionic solutions, this sometimes results in the formation of solid precipitate. Again, it's got to be the right attraction to form that solid. Precipitation is not limited to solids. Um, the degree to which a compound dissolves in water is called its solubility. So here if we have the same equation, if we break it up into its ions, these are the ions before the reaction. So you've got calcium ions, chloride, sodium, and oxalate. Now, when they come together after the reaction, you've got two sodium ions, two chloride ions, and you've got the solid calcium oxalate. Now if you look at the equation, just like in math, what's on the left side and what's on the right side, they have to be equal. But if something is the same on the left and the same on the right, you can cancel them out. So here we're going to look and cancel out the spectator ions. These are the ones that are not involved in the reaction, they're just floating around. They're ions to begin with, ions to end with, it's the same before and the same after in the products. So the chloride, the sodium, both are the same before and after. Okay. Now the equation then becomes calcium ions plus oxalate ions, making calcium oxalate solid. The top equation here is a molecular equation. Uh, the second equation here is called the ionic equation. And then when you cancel out the spectators, this is called the net ionic equation. So when we look at solubility, here is what is called a solubility trend or a solubility chart. Um, the general trends I told you in the beginning are very, very helpful. There are, again, some exceptions to that. So we can see in the general trends, nitrates, chlorides, they tend to be soluble, minus one, minus one. Hydroxides are not soluble most of the time unless it's plus one. Sulfates are soluble most of the time but not with things here uh, that have heavy transition metals. Carbonates, not soluble unless it's a plus one. Oxalates and phosphates as well. Now there's some positive and negative aspects to the solubility of toxic substances. Sometimes it's good to have something be soluble and go out of your body through the liquid waste. Your can, body can filter that out. The bad thing about having something soluble is it spreads throughout your entire body because your body is a watery environment. And so because of that, sometimes it's better to have it form a precipitate and be solid so it can exit. 
The real challenge though, like in kidney stones, is when you have an aqueous solution where a solid forms, and that solid forms in a place where it cannot get out. Um, it's stuck. When it's stuck, it can cause uh, it can cause blockages and infection. Now, once the substance is absorbed, though, it may be difficult for the body to get rid of it through natural filtration systems, kidneys, and the liver. So, which substances precipitate from aqueous solutions? Depends on solubility, compounds that are soluble, that are not soluble form precipitates, compounds that are soluble tend to be stay aqueous. If you mix two aqueous salts, this often results in the formation of precipitate. Insoluble substances can interact with the human body in positive or negative ways. <clears throat> so if we look here at a solution of potassium sulfate is mixed with a solution of lead nitrate of precipitate forms. So write the chemical equation for this reaction. What is the precipitate that forms? How do you know? And then write the net ionic equation for this reaction. <clears throat> 